Hi, this is QD Clinic, brought to you by RoomNow.Live. A great meeting 23 days from now, and you can attend by just registering. You can watch it free on the internet, starting on the 22nd and the 23rd and the 24th, all from home. It's gonna be great. You can be a part of the audience and see great speakers, great presentations, and great interactivity all at roomnow.live. Our case today is called rheumatoid cachexia. It's a patient I saw recently who's an 86-year-old white gentleman who I've taken care of for more than 10 years. I diagnosed him as having rheumatoid arthritis in 2008. At that time, he had polyarthritis, morning stiffness, uh, a bunch of swollen joints, high sed rate, uh, a strongly positive CCP, a positive rheumatoid factor. He started on methotrexate, did great. Has done great for the last 10 years. However, starting about 10, 11 months ago, he came in, he looked a little thin. He looked like he had lost about 20 pounds. I said, what's the deal? He said, I don't know, I'm losing weight. My appetite's a little less, but I'm losing weight. I said, okay, well, you gotta get that worked up. I've seen him now, like this is the third time I'm seeing him with weight loss being the big ticket item on the table. He's now lost 80 pounds of weight. And I don't know, nobody's grabbing the bull by the horns and taking care of this, so I am. So this is profound weight loss in a guy who's been seen by his primary care doctor and has had some workup, but it doesn't seem like there's been much workup. For instance, there's been no GI referral and the gentleman has never had a colonoscopy. There's been no chest X-ray. There's been lab tests done and recently he had a cardiac workup thinking this was cardiac cachexia. He doesn't really have much of a cardiac history, I must say. So anyway, we're gonna take over and at 80 pounds, we're telling the primary care what needs to be done. This clearly is cachexia. You know, he's dropped his weight from 221 down to 142. This is not good. So the question is, what's the cause? He has no other medical illnesses that would account for such a cause of extreme weight loss. His drug, methotrexate, is really his only rheumatoid arthritis drug um, is really not associated with cachexia. Uh, so if you look it up, you'll find out there are a lot of reports, but usually rheumatoid arthritis is being treated with methotrexate or methotrexate being used for another condition, which is also the, which is really the cause of their profound weight loss. You know, many of the drugs that we currently use, like the TNF inhibitors, can cause a little bit of weight loss, uh, and that's because of why. Well, inflammation makes people um, lose their appetite, and they can um, actually lose weight as a result of inflammation. And then when you correct their inflammation with an effective biologic or anti-inflammatory, they get back their normal appetite and boom, they actually gain weight. So I might've said the TNF inhibitors cause you to lose weight. No, they actually cause you to gain weight. Of all the drugs that we take care of, in my experience, the only one that really can cause significant weight loss in patients is number one, leflunamide. They often have GI symptoms and uh, yes, you stop the leflunamide and their 20 pound weight loss goes away. And then two, a premolast. As you know, it's part of the package insert. About 10% of patients will lose 10% of their body weight. And that's sort of a nice side effect, um, but it may come at the risk of having GI side effects. But methotrexate, no, doesn't really cause weight loss and, I, and I've excluded that possibility. However, if he's so sick, or sick looking, I have to stop the methotrexate, we'll see what happens. The question is, could it be rheumatoid arthritis? There is such a thing called rheumatoid cachexia. I've seen at least two good cases of rheumatoid cachexia. One was in the county hospital about 20 years ago. One was about 20 years ago in a third world country where patients had overwhelming, uncontrolled, severe inflammatory polyarticular rheumatoid arthritis and these people just shriveled up. And you know, they were like 90 pounds and when they should have been 140 or 160. Uh, and yes, effective therapy uh, helped them to regain their weight. I came across a recent uh, article from the Brazilian literature where they did a meta-analysis of the topic of rheumatoid cachexia, looked at 136 articles, narrowed it down to eight. They define rheumatoid cachexia um, using usually dual energy um, X-ray absorptiometry or DEXA, where you can actually estimate total body mass, uh, muscular lean mass, and fat mass, uh, and they defined it as free fat mass below the 10th percentile and full mass index above the 25th percentile. With this sort of liberal definition of cachexia, they say in their paper paper that it's seen up to 32% of rheumatoids have rheumatoid cachexia. I don't think so. 
their more um, stringent measure says 19% of rheumatoids have rheumatoid cachexia. I don't think so. So again, it's out there. It tends to be in places where patients can be undertreated. The one thing about this paper says that rheumatoid cachexia, as they define it, unfortunately, maybe wrongly defined it, had no um, association or correlation with disease activity scores. And that's really what it is. It's, it's incredible cytokine and pro-inflammatory cytokines that make you get cachectic, which means that you must have lots of extreme activity going on for a long period of time. So it's a rare thing, you can see it. It's obviously a big call uh, for action as far as therapy. The workup on this gentleman is going to be a chest X-ray, um, usual blood tests, usual health maintenance. He's being sent to GI for endoscopy and colonoscopy, which he's never had. He has no GI symptoms, I must say. He's getting a quantifier at this point because his sed rate, CRP, CMP, usual CBCs are all looking pretty good, a marginal elevation of a CRP. And we're gonna do the quantifier on his LDH has been normal, his SPEP has been normal. We'll check his urinalysis. His PCP wants to do a PET scan. Let's do the smart things, easy things first, and then get a PET scan later on. But obviously this is a very challenging case and hopefully you don't see anything like this.